Hello, my name's Arthur. I'm a bookbinder and a book conservator. And I'd like to talk to you today about leather pairing by hand. The first thing I'd like to look at is the geometry of the blades, um, how the angle can affect the process and how that might make your life a little easier when you come to pairing leather. The second thing I'd like to look at is, is to demonstrate how to use a knife, how to use an English knife and a French knife and how, how you hold your hands, uh, how you move the blades and, and hopefully give you a little bit of guidance and make that process a little bit easier. I'd like to talk to you now about the geometry of leather pairing knives. So we're not talking about the, the angle of the blade itself, but we're talking about the angle of approach. And I'm going to use the term skew. A carving knife and fork. It would be normal for us to cut with the knife in, a, in an angled approach. It would be odd, really, to push straight down. Your hands have already learnt that it's much easier to push down at an angle. We're skewing the angle. We've, we've changed that to a shallower angle, and that's much easier. I'll give you another example. This is a, a fairly standard woodworking plane. It's quite normal for people working with a plane like this to, to twist the plane, and we're skewing that angle. We're making the approach a shallower approach. That angle makes things a little bit easier for us. The third analogy I'd like to give you is a mountain road. Imagine a mountain, and that road is zigzagging across up left to right. The road doesn't go straight up the hill because that would be, that'd be really hard. It's a little bit like a cyclist cycling up a road. When the angle gets a little bit too steep, you do a bit of zigzagging, things will get a little bit easier. But the angle of the hill hasn't got any, any less. We've skewed our approach. We've reduced the angle. We've made it easier for ourselves. So we can take that aspect of skew and we can apply that to our knives. The angle of approach will affect how how easy it is to pair leather. So I'm gonna, gonna put this into practice now and I'm going to demonstrate uh, pairing a piece of red goat leather, a good quality Harmattan goat leather. I'm going to pair this with an English style pairing knife. This is one I've made myself that I sell, but it's got that angled blade. So our approach to the, to the leather would be something like this. This is a fairly standard way to pair an edge. So what's happening here? Well, I've, I've skewed the blade. I'll give you an explanation of this. What I didn't do was I didn't pair with my blade perpendicular to the edge of the leather. Now that's possible, but it's hard work. So working perpendicular or at 90 degrees is tough. So we've reduced the angle from 90 degrees down to, what was it? Well, maybe something like five or 10. And that makes things much easier. We've skewed the blade. I've made this model to try and explain a little bit of what's going on then with that English knife. The angles have been changed a little bit. I've squared the end and it's increased to about 45 degrees. An English pairing knife would normally be much closer to 15 degrees, a very shallow bevel. So we'll, we'll start off, as I showed earlier, at a very uh, square angle. We're, we're running perpendicular to the leather. So therefore the cross section of the, the edge of the blade would be 45 degrees. So let's, let's imagine then for a minute we've skewed our, our blade around. We've changed the angle of approach. The cross section of this point here is now reduced down to about 30 degrees. And that's making life a little bit easier for ourselves. If we come down a bit further to this third angle, and that's really much closer to a normal approach that would be quite common, we would pair at this angle here, this much shallower angle, We've skewed it round. The cross section of this area would be nearer to 10 or 15 degrees. And the result of that is life's a bit easier. The shallower, pointier blade makes cutting easier. So we've just looked at how skewing the blade gives the advantage of virtually lowering the angle. The good news is there's another benefit. We're taking our English pairing knife. I'm just gonna give that a little strop now. And I'm going to pair the leather. Again, I'm going to do this perpendicular. It's hard work, as we've discussed. But let's pair that leather. So I'm, I'm managing it, but it's hard work. So the amount of blade being used is exactly the width of the piece of leather. Well, let's skew our blade. I'm using almost all the blade. I'm using now the middle section from about here to about here. So we're using, well, about 80% of the blade. 
So all of that blade is, is being used to pair the same width of, of leather. So we're, we're gaining with uh, a reduced angle from skew and we're also gaining by an increased amount of blade being used to cut the same amount of leather. We're doing this for a reason, it's because it works. It's the only knife that gives sufficient control. Douglas Cockrell said that about French paring knives in the early 20th century. And over 100 years later, I think I agree. This is my French style paring knife. Here it is. Uh, there, there are a number of features that I, I can discuss, but most importantly, this blade has a curved edge, as you can see. That's the, 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 the primary characteristic that defines these, these knives. It's symmetrical, so it has the same cutting action on each edge. Now I'd like to give you some guidance on edge pairing with a French knife. I'm going to show you exactly how I would do it. Uh, it's a safe way, it's a methodical way, and importantly, it works and you can get repeatable results. I pair with the leather perpendicular to me. Under no circumstances must your supporting hand, in this case my left hand, be in front of the blade. I'm working with the leather under tension between the blade and, and this thumb and forefinger. Okay, and there are three angles I'm considering. This is why it's a little bit more fiddly. There's a lot more control needed. The first angle is the lift, if you like. So we need to lift the blade and make a little bite. There we go. Now, if you lift it too high, it's going to cut into the leather. If you lift it too low, it will slide over the top. The second angle is sort of opening the door, if you like. That angle sets the angle of our cut. So we can take a, a tiny bit off, or we can close the door, and we can take a bit more off, a shallower angle. The third angle of the blade is maybe most interesting to us today. This is our skew. This is the angle of approach. So I would always start in the middle of the piece of leather, and I'll demonstrate now. Can you see how I'm bringing the leather back to me all the time? It's very tempting to, at this point to finish that piece of pairing. What will happen is that these fingers here are now fouling the stone and the temptation is to lift up to carry on over and then you'll dig in. So don't do that. Keep bringing it forward and finish pairing that edge. There we go. As I mentioned earlier, the blade is symmetrical. So we can use the same motion on the other edge. So from the middle outwards and we're using the corner of the blade, we're not drifting into the middle of the blade. Try to think about your knife in terms of steering, that the sharp edge of the blade is doing the cutting and you're doing the steering. It should be that at any time you're able to stop. So I can steer the blade, let's do a, an error, let's force that to go in and I can steer it back and I can open it up and I can close it down and reduce that angle. So you should be steering that blade along the edge of the leather. One mistake that's quite common with people learning is that rather than pushing the blade parallel to the edge of the leather, there's a temptation to push the blade in the direction of the blade. Rather than doing this, we end up doing this. And what happens is you'll start traveling into the middle of the blade and it gets hard work. There we go. So we're not here, we're here in the middle. Well, wh why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because it's hard work, you start cutting into the leather. Well, what's going on? That's my normal angle of approach. The angle of approach is very close to that of an English paring knife. It's very shallow. When we end up in the middle of the blade, that angle's been reduced right down, it's quite steep. So we've lost all the benefits of skew that I described earlier. We're now using less of the blade and we have a steeper virtual angle. So far I've talked about edge pairing leather with an English knife and then with a French knife. Some people really struggle with, with using uh, both of those knives and most of the problems that people encounter when trying to pair leather are that their tools aren't sharp. Most of the time, when a knife has been ground to the correct angle, it should be little more than a strop that would bring that edge back. There we go. So I'd like to introduce you to a different tool, something that I 
became familiar with when working in the bookbinding trade in London. And this is a, a knife that's been made from a Sheffield steel butter knife. It has the great advantage of this big, long, sharp edge. So you, again, going back to our skew, we are going to make the most of a much, much wider cutting surface. The disadvantage is perhaps that this knife is less precise. If you're doing an addition, a run of lots and lots of, of, of bindings and you need to quickly edge pair lots and lots of leather, this is great and this would be my go-to knife. Perhaps we, we use it in the same way that we would use an English knife. So a really nice long, uh, a long angle. There we go, look. Easy peasy.